Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. I uh, hope everyone's well. It's a little bit sunnier today than it has been and uh, wouldn't say it was warm, but uh, it does start you making thoughts about summer holidays and things like that in January. It's always been traditional in, um, in England anyway to start booking your summer holiday just as soon as Christmas is out of the way. Um, but nobody's going anywhere this year, at least not if they've got half a brain, they're not. Well, we're not anyway. Um, so I'm going to paint a seaside scene and uh, I'm going to be copying this painting, which I did, I don't know when, a couple of years ago, three years ago, probably. Um, and I'm just going to do it quite quickly. I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I go along. And if it doesn't work out, um, I won't be put putting the video up so you won't see it anyway. So I'm just picking up some cobalt blue, actually ultramarine. Could have been cobalt blue. I was hoping it would be. This is cobalt. It's very similar. Actually, no, it isn't. That's ultramarine. Okay. So we have, well, maybe it's cobalt. This cobalt. What am I talking about? This is ultramarine. This is cobalt on this side. So we're just popping that in, coming down to roughly where the line of the trees is going to be. And I'm just dropping that in with a size 11 round brush. Now I'm just going to pick up a crumpled tissue and I'm going to lift out some clouds just by dabbing the crumpled tissue into the cloud area. I'm going to put a bit more blue up the top there and do that again to show you that uh, if you're not happy with the strength of the whole thing in the first place, you can just do it again. So. Let's just do that again, and you can see there's a hair there, get rid of that. Okay, so crumpled tissue, and we'll just lift out some clouds like that, and come back in with a little bit of a harder press, like that, maybe one up there, and let the paint kind of replace itself into, into wherever it was going to go. Now, this is a little bit of Windsor Violet I've got here, um, which I'm just going to drop in on the horizon line, like that. And I'm going to also just pop in a little bit of quinacridone gold just on the edge of the horizon like that. And then just lift some of that out. Blend it in a little bit, and then we have a kind of a distant view, and then we go back to the blue. Just drop a bit of blue in. A far distant hill. Now whether this is going to work out or not. And then um, for the beach or the sea. I have a little bit of uh, grey, we just grey down the blue a little bit. And then using the side of the brush, just do some sweeping strokes across like that. Don't fiddle with it. And then for the foreground, the sand, we're going to make that a sort of pinkish gold. So that's quinacridone gold and alizarin crimson, and a little bit of blue make it a little bit brownish and then we'll just pop that in really loose for the beach and then we'll want some some more browny colours so I'll mix some more quinacridone gold with Windsor Violet to get a nice nice brown and then we'll just drop a few bits of brown in there for you know just some texture on the ground And what we have to do now is we just have to let that dry. 
So now we're going to start landscape, little mini landscape number two. And uh, same kind of idea. I'm just going to wet the area of the sky. These are little paintings, just about four by six. And um, I'm going to pick up some cobalt blue, and I'm pretty sure it is cobalt blue. And I've mixed it with a little bit of something brownish, something pinkish, to give us a wintry sky this time. And I've left a little space there to indicate a cloud. That's another way of doing clouds. On this one that I did before, I lifted them out with tissue. So you get quite a white cloud. And this one, I'm just leaving a space um, where the clouds are. And now I've mixed up some green, which is a mixture of um, sap green and a little bit of blue, a little bit of quinacridone gold until I'm sort of happy with the colour. I'm painting from imagination. I mean, you know, you can do whatever you like. So I'm just dropping in some trees and I'm just doing vertical strokes like that. I did a little mark there, so I'll just lift that out. And then I'm going to pick up some olive green mixed with quinacridone to make it a bit darker and also mix it with some Windsor Violet to make a nice dark green. And we'll drop that in at the bottom here. I'm still using <clears throat> the uh, number 14, uh, sorry, number 11 uh, round nylon brush. This is a draw well brush from Japan. And uh, then we'll come back in with a little bit more even darker and just put some, some darker greens in there. You have to trust a little bit to the, <coughs> um, to the process because you can't, or if you paint loosely, the whole point of painting loosely, and that's what this is all about, is um, can't really predict exactly what's going to happen. So if, if we're going to assume this is on water, um, which we could, then we'll just sweep in some water there like that. And then we're going to come back in and drop in the reflections of the trees underneath, which is what gives, if, if anything does, gives the impression of water. And then on my original here, which I painted a while ago, I had some, um, some rocks. And they were kind of brownish, weren't they? So we'll need a bit of brown in with the blue give ourselves a brown, browny grey colour. And we'll just drop something in there. Like I say, it's never going to be exactly the same as it was before. It's impossible. If you do it like that, then one way that you can make it look like it's water is to grab a card and then just scrape through there. The reflection meets the water. And we'll just lift it out a little bit. I'm just going to do some dry brush across the front here. And then we'll let it dry. And then we'll probably put some of these, some of these rushes like I've got here. We we'll put some of those in here. We need to let it dry now. 
So putting that aside, let it dry, and we go back to this one. And um, yeah, we need to define the distance a little bit. So we're going to come back in with some quite light mauve, violet, some kind of... Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this because I'm not totally happy with that yellow. So I'm going to paint the distant hills over the top of that. And then I'm going to put another layer in front like that. And then come back with some light grey in the water like that. Okay, that's better. And then here it was going to be pinkish, yellowish, pink for the sand, so... Okay, now I do want to put some people to some brown. It's just random, it doesn't have any particular meaning. Now when that's dry, I'll be able to put my little people in, which you can see here, as a, a couple standing on the beach there. And we could put them about here, I think, probably be the best place for them. And um, while I'm waiting for that to dry, that one and that one are now both wet, I'm going to do some butterflies, if I can find a piece of paper. Um, I don't know what that paper was that I was painting on, but it was probably, I would say, most likely Claire Fontaine Etival, 140 pound hard, sorry, cold pressed watercolor paper. Um, which uh, you can get if you want to go to one of our links, that would be highly appreciated. And then we get a tiny, tiny little commission from Amazon, although it doesn't actually cost anything to you. So now this is just a little bonus while I'm waiting for this to dry. I'm going to paint some butterflies in a in a way that I haven't done before. Now, this is what I would call an icebreaker or a warm-up. I am suggesting that you just paint, outline and fill in, in water. And you can see where you've painted if you just tilt it slightly. And then pick up any color at random and just drop it in, make it a colour rather than mud. Just drop it in. Adjust the shape a little bit so it looks more like a butterfly than just a splodge. Maybe take a slightly smaller brush and pick up some darker Colour, the edges perhaps. This is one of the reasons I don't like tiny brushes because they, they don't pick up the paint. Okay, so then we just try that. And then in the middle, You'll see the benefit of this once they start to dry. You just dry that off in the middle. And I'm going to come in, you've got a choice 
quite often I use a watercolour pencil. This is a Stettler Karat Aquarelle and I just quite like the way you can get a different amount of darkness just by how hard you press. But then for the antennae you need a pen. And then I would leave it like that. If you want to, you can come in with water and refine the shape of the body like that. And if you feel that's too dark, you can lift some of the color out. Just the shape until you're happy. And then do the same thing again. I suggest you pick up the paper because you can't see if you're looking at it straight on. Just paint roughly the shape, which is basically a fat cross. And then pick up your colour. Let's say this one's going to be sort of golden brown. Just drop that in. And then go for something slightly darker. So we want some more of that and then we need uh, to make that darker brown. What shall I use? I really want, hmm, I'll just use this. This is uh, English red or Venetian red. Just drop that in at the tips. One or two little bits here. A couple of little bits there. And then I need to dry the middle a little bit because otherwise the black pencil will run too much. So then we're going to put head, body, antennae, and then we'll let that dry too, and so on. This idea kind of came because a lady said um, she wondered whether if she was to draw less and come in more with paint right from the get-go, her paintings might be looser and I thought, you know what, you've got a point, so let's not draw at all. Okay, so we've got this nice uh, blue one here now, so we'll just Drop in some darker blue at the tips of the wings there, and down here, and here. And we let that dry, then we come in. I somehow think, actually, I don't want to do that with that. I'm going to do it with paint for this blue one like that. Antennae. And you can if you want, you can go round them with pen like that. But uh, sometimes it's nice to have them really soft. And then carry on until the page is full. it up because otherwise I can't see where I've put the water. I 
and there's all sorts of different variations that you could do. Darker colour down the side. And if you drop the body in with paint rather than the pen pencil, and then maybe just a little bit of shadow, that's another way of doing it. And if you feel that it's gone a bit dark, you just grab your tissue and lift something out. It's always possible to adjust and we let that dry. So now, having spent some time doing those, um, we'll come back to this one. And my original here that I'm redoing has got some bulrushes on the front there. And so I need a fairly small brush for that and some dark, dark brown, so I'll mix some black with some brown. This is sepia, I expect, so I've just made it a bit darker. I burnt umber. So just some few darks over here, a few pebbles on the beach. And I think we'll call that one done. the little beach scene and uh, this is not necessarily all that easy doing people but um, you need a fairly small brush I've got a um, size 5 here and uh, one thing to remember with um, bodies is that you start off with a very very small head shall put them in the distance so let's let's put them here so we have a tiny head for the man and then he's going to be wearing blue shorts down here and then His body and his legs. One leg. I always think it's best to go with the flow and if your adults turn into children then go with it. So then we want some red because uh, he looks like a little boy so I'm going to change that. I'm going to say mother dark hair and 
and her legs. And maybe a little dog in the distance. Maybe a ball. And a little blue shadow. Standing on the beach. So maybe he needs an arm. So there we are, one beach scene with two little people, a dog and a ball, just a hint, one lakeside view, and in process I'll show you how this one finishes up in the next video, some butterflies and I'm going to do some, I don't know, some background of leaves or something like that and we'll decorate these butterflies as well. So that will be finished in the next video. So I'll let go now and I will see you again tomorrow. So have a lovely evening. Happy painting, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.